Let's move to this tragic story now. Four children burnt to death in a fire at an informal settlement in Hendrina in Mpumalanga. It's understood their shack caught fire in the early hours of this morning. Two sets of twins, aged eight and 13, were apparently left in the care of their older brother for three days. All right, ENCA reporter Heidi Jokos has been following the story and she joins us in studio now. So Heidi, you were there today. I mean, this is just horrific. Four children, two sets of twins from one family. What have you been able to piece together about what happened? Sally, we still don't know what caused the fire, but all I can say is this is truly a devastating story. And just hearing uh, what exactly happened, how uh, it's um, apparent that the the two sets of twins were screaming for help. We do know that just after one o'clock in the morning, the fire broke out. We don't know yet what caused the fire, but we do know that the 17-year-old was in a separate shack to um, his siblings. We do know he was alone in the shack, but it's literally right next to the shack where uh, the two sets of twins were sleeping. Um, he got out, uh, according to police, he got out, he tried to uh, get help and uh, tried to open the door of the shack, but it seems as though the shack was locked from the end Inside. and apparently the fire was so bad that nobody could help and um, what's more alarming about this story is the fact that the police say when they arrived at the scene they could not find or locate any parent they couldn't find the mother and they could not find the father it was only the 17 year old and uh, according to police she had not been home since Friday and um, they're not sure where she went they suspect that she was at her boyfriend they managed to call her and um, her phone was off though uh, they had been trying the whole uh, morning her phone was off eventually they got her to the scene just after half past six and uh, apparently she was completely distraught but the police are saying that they don't understand how uh, five children could be left alone in the care uh, of basically nobody and the 17 year old being responsible for two sets of twins but let's listen to what the police had to say about this our members were called earlier on earlier in the morning at the around um, one between one and two uh, to that uh, there was a fire and then when they when they arrived here indeed they were they found one shack on fire uh, it was it was it was already you know you know um, uh, out of control and then they they called the the fire extinguishers and then they came in they tried to you know extinguish the fire but then after the whole thing has been done unfortunately two sets of twins um, were already gone they succumbed to the to the fire we don't know now for now what caused the fire uh, we, we we suspect various things but then uh, we are waiting our forensics to come and uh, and do the proper investigation and uh, assist in terms of giving us exactly what might have caused the fire because if you look here there, there there's, 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 there's a, um, an, an old stove a coal stove that you see here on the rubble there's a couple of cables loose cables on the ground which suggests that uh, there might have been an illegal connection of electricity so uh, the various things that uh, might have caused this and it's winter so we don't know whether perhaps there was a heater inside or whether there perhaps there was a candle because they said that the electricity was off from 11 o'clock in the evening until 1 a.m. We don't know where, where, what might have caused the fire. Uh, it's a horrific story Heidi. Mm -hmm. um, you've also spoken to a neighbor who tried to help the four children. Yes, Sally, and um, the neighbor tried to hold back his tears and so did I because mm -hmm. the way he explains it is truly it's so heartbreaking. He says that he uh, woke up to um, screams of the children calling him uncle because they used to call him uncle. Most of the time they were alone at home with their 17 year old brother and they all used to play with uh, the children in, in, the, in the area all together and he says he just kept hearing uncle help us help us and he says he, he jumped um, he says he woke up in his sleep of course and he jumped up and um, jumped over the, the gates and he says um, he tried to open the door and he could still hear, I think this is what completely broke my heart, is that he could still hear the kids screaming for help. So uh, what police were saying is that they were hoping that at least, you know, they weren't alive when all of this was happening, that there were perhaps the smoke inhalation mm. or whatever it might have been. I mean, I don't even want to think about yeah. the details, oh, but uh, the neighbor says he, he, he couldn't help it. He couldn't help the situation. He says they used water, called neighbors, called everybody in the area to assist, and he says it was just too late. He says the fire was out of control. He actually had to go to the clinic in the morning because his hands uh, were, were, there were burn marks on his hands because he was just trying to get the shack open. Let's listen to um, how he explains what happened. I was sleeping, was needed at night. I hear my daughter say, my father, yo, 
wake up someone is screaming outside when i go outside i see the fire i was sitting where i was just wearing a pvd i just jumped the gate go to my neighbor and then hit the door the fire was too much but the kids were screaming inside and then i go the back i try to open the sink the fire was all over the the house the neighbors come and then they try to put the water it was just late. Oh, Heidi, I mean, it's just horrific, but it's important to engage on the story because it raises broader questions about um, what, you know, apart from the fact that the mother was absent, I mean, that is, a, that is a very important issue that has to be addressed. But the reality is proper housing, proper electricity is not available to this family. Yes, certainly, and I think that's something that definitely needs to be highlighted. And I think we forget when we hear about these shack fires, we think, oh no, another shack fire. But there's more to it, Sally. And we actually did get a chance to speak to the ward council in the area, and I posed that question and said, but why is this area not being formalized? Why is there no proper electricity supply? Why is there no proper water? Why do these people not have proper housing? Why must they be subjected to this? Their dignity is being taken away every single day. Day. and now you have four lives lost this could have been worse if the shacks were very close to each other luckily they were not close to each other there's a bit of space between uh, what would have happened to the 17 year old nobody knows and this is vital for government to understand the urgency in providing proper housing to the people of South Africa. You cannot have this situation on a constant basis. So it's definitely something we'll be following up on. And the ward council are indicating that they are trying to expedite the process. Uh, but of course, there's a lot involved and it's not that simple. But four lives have been lost. Yeah. It's just so tragic. Two sets of twins aged eight and 13. Oh, Heidi, a very sad story indeed. Of course, that incident happening in Hendrina in Umpumalanga in the early hours of this morning. Thank you very much, Heidi Jokos.